This video is going to show you how to do um, certain parts of your math workbook pages 4.1, 4.2, and 4.3. For the most part, those pages are very self-explanatory, but there are a couple of um, challenging spots just because the directions are kind of challenging. So on 4.1, um, what that workbook page is trying to show to you is it wants to show you how addition and multiplication are related and how subtraction and division is related. So it asks you to write a related multiplication or division sentence or I like to say a division problem or a multiplication problem. And it gives you problems like this. And with this, it wants you to write a related multiplication or division sentence or problem. So it wants you to see that if you start off with 24 and you take out groups of six, that that is dividing. They've basically taken 24 and divided it into groups of six until they had no more, until it became zero. So if you were going to write a related division sentence, because subtraction is related to division, so when you see a subtraction sign, know automatically, well, I'm going to write a division sentence or a division problem for that. So basically what you're saying is 24 divided by, and I'm using this slash mark because I cannot quickly find the regular division sign, um, and a slash mark actually means division. So you will use the traditional division sign, which is the line with the dot on top and the dot on bottom on your paper. But for my typing purposes, I'm using the slash. So we're saying 24 divided by 6 because we've divided it into groups of six, it's going to equal how many groups of six? One, two, three, four. It's going to equal four. All right? Ignore that zero. All right? You're not going to use that in your division problem. Then, if we come over here to this one, 10 minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 equals zero, what we're saying is we've taken the number 10 and we've divided it into groups of 2. And how many groups of 2 did we divide it into? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 equals 5. So 10 divided by 2 equals 5. That is not a, a big um, revelation to you. I'm sure you know that 10 divided by 2 equals 5. But that's what they're trying to get you to understand with this or with this. Now, personally, I think the addition is easier because it's easier to see. First of all, there's no zeros up here like there is here. So again, ignore the zeros because that is not going to end up being in your division problem. Here it wants you to see that repeated addition is the same thing as multiplication. So when we have 1, 2, 3, 3 times 7, or 3 groups of 7 equals 21. It's very visually um, accommodating there. You can see that. And then over here, it is 4 groups of 8, so 4 times 8, and that equals 24. So that's what they're trying to get you to see up there. Now one of the other things they say is if drawing a picture helps, then you can draw a picture. And they give you a box there. You can do that. You can draw the box if it, draw in the box if it helps you. If it doesn't, you can skip that and you don't have to put anything in the box. But I'll show you how to do it. Um, so we would start with 24, um, and I'm going to start with 
24 X's. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. All right, I'm going to make these a little bit bigger font. And I think that'll be easier to see. And I'm also going to make them red. So now we have our 24 X's. Then we would break them into groups of six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to put my cursor there. Hit the underline, hit the enter key. And again, do six more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put my cursor there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put my cursor there. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. And after I've broken them into groups of six, you can see I have four groups. So if that's helpful to you and you want to draw pictures in that box, you just go right ahead. But if that doesn't add anything to your understanding, then you can skip that part. Um, then the bottom, the middle of that page, numbers four, five, and six, um, gives you problems similar to this. And I put this scale here because I want you to realize when you have a problem that has a equal sign and equal sign in the middle of two other number sentences, that that's kind of like having a scale. You want the sides to be even. So it's asking you, is 10 plus 10 plus 10 equal to 3 times 10? So what is the answer to 10 times 10 times 10? Well, it's 30. And what is 3 times 10? Well, it's 30. So yes, these are equal. And your directions say, tell whether this sentence is true. Well, this would be true. So all you would write down is true. There would be a little line there. You're going to write true. For this one, it says 5 plus 5 plus 5 equals 4 times 5. What is 5 plus 5 plus 5? Well, it's 15. What is 4 plus 5? Well, it's 20. So this one is not true. So you would write false. But then the directions want you to fix it if it is false. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You can go back up into the sentence and say, all right, I know if I add a five, then we've got five, 10, 15, 20, and four times five is 20. That works. Or if you thought about it a little differently, you might say, oh, here's three fives. So if I go over here, and change that 4 to a 3, then that makes it true. So that's how, if it's false, you make it true by changing the numbers so that they make sense. On 4.2, you are going to have a couple of problems that um, look like this. And um, this is just your book likes to get you prepared for algebra by putting these letters in here and letter just means blank. Think of it like a blank line. So 12 times three equals 36. So on the line underneath it, you are going to write 36. Now something else the direction says is to write a related sentence. So that would be something like, 3 times 12, because that is just the opposite of this. Or you could have written a division problem. You could have said 36 times, oops, I'm sorry, divided, and I have to use that, divided by 12 equals 3. Up here I should have included the equals 36. But these kind, they just want you to write another member of the fact family. So same idea here. If you have 
7 times B equals 28. That's 7 times blank. What would we fill in that blank? We would fill it in with a 4. And then to write a related fact, you will say, okay, if 7 times 4 equals 28, then 4 times 7 equals 28. Or you could say 28 divided by 7 equals 4. So that's, I, I just like to give you these directions because um, sometimes the wording is a little confusing. Now on 4.3, it is very straightforward, except it throws this in in the middle. Um, find the value of C times 8 for each value of A. That is not normally how a fourth grader speaks. So here's what it means. This is the math problem. You're going to, this should say, this should be an A here. Okay. This is the math problem. You're going to use this every single time. This math problem that is in your directions. I'm going to highlight it whenever you um, get to that underline it or something, draw a box around it, and then they're going to give you some problems. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to look at this every time. Here, A equals 6. So you're going to put 6 right there. What is 6 times 8? 6 times 8 is 48. So you're going to write that underneath the problem, and you'll see it. It's problems... Um, 17, 18, 19, and 20 on workbook 4.3. And then you're going to go back to this problem. You're going to use it every time. This time you're going to put a 7 in there. 7 times 8. What is that? It's 56. Then for this one, you're going to go back to this very same problem. You're going to put 2 in there. What is 2 times 8? 2 times 8 is 16. So it's not that tricky. It's just that that is a very awkward explanation.